The last example that we're going to do is using the Shape Builder tool. Now, the Shape Builder tool is sort of an adaptation of your pathfinders. And what those tools allow you to do is either to combine shapes together to create them into compound paths or compound shapes. You can also subtract or exclude from different shapes as well to make more complex ones. And the Shape Builder tool is just one tool that's a little bit more intuitive that basically allows you to create a third shape when two shapes overlap one another. So you can actually get some pretty interesting results when you use this tool. It also allows you the flexibility to subtract or add different shapes from one another instead of drawing new shapes. So what I'm going to do here is again, I'm just going to have this as a white background, but I'm still going to draw my shape in here. So I'm just going to bring my grids back up. I'm going to lock this layer, create a new layer. I'm just going to call this one shape builder. And I'm just going to grab my rectangle tool again, draw out background shape. I'll just leave it white. And now I'm just going to grab my type tool. And again, I'm just going to make this be 200 points. I'll make it be bold. And I'm just going to type out the word graphic design. Okay, so again, I'm going to type out the entire word. I'll just put it on two lines. Okay, I'll hold option down key just to increase the letting. And then I'll make this be uppercase. So I'll go to my type menu, go to change case select uppercase. Okay. So now I have that. And then I'm going to convert these into outlines because what I want to do is separate some of the letters from each other and position them in a certain order. So again, I can go to type and then create outlines or the shortcut shift command O. Okay. So now I'm going to ungroup them. So shift command G so that I can move them around how I like. So what I'm going to do is have the G, R, and A on their own line. And then I'm going to put the P, H, and I on another line. And I'm just going to kind of align them right under the R like that. I'll move these ones out of the way for now. And I'll put C over here and just kind of align it right under the G and then I'll take D, E, and S and bring those up and just align the stroke to the letter P stroke. Okay. And then we'll take the I, G, and N and also just align the I to the stroke of the D. Okay, so you can always just kind of fine tune that and adjust it any how you like. Okay, so now I'm going to select all these characters. I'm going to deselect the background shape. And now what I'm going to do is just make like the bottom of the G just sit right in the corner of these two grid lines. So I'll scale it up until maybe the C sort of lines up there as well. Okay, I'm just going to group them all together. All right, so I can always adjust this a little bit later, but for now, what I'm going to do is take my line tool. And what I want to do is create this sort of effect where, you know, there's a line sort of dividing these uh, characters or this phrase. So I'm going to take my line tool. I'm going to start from the top left corner, click and drag while holding shift. Just go all the way down to the bottom left corner. I'm just going to put a stroke of one point. Okay, I'm just going to make that blue just so you can see it and then I'll take another line and start from this point here right between this module and click and drag all the way down to the bottom here so what I'm gonna do is delete the bottom portion of the G the bottom portion of the P and the E from in between here so that all I could see is the um, portions of the C the D and the E and then back here, I'm going to delete portions of 
the C and the I. So maybe I want to scale this a bit down so I can see more of the letter I for now. So I'm just going to click on this group of letters and just scale it down a little bit. So maybe something like that. Okay, so I still want it to be fairly legible, right? So if I have some of the I here, that looks fine, All right? So I created these lines because when you use the Shape Builder tool, like I said, you have to have two or more objects selected in order for it to either delete from a shape or add to a shape. So what I'm going to do is use this line as almost a divider. Okay, so you can have this if you ever use the Pathfinder tool before. You can use divide, put a line through it. It basically just cuts these letters. So what I'm going to do is select the line. Now that I have all these letters here, I'm just going to ungroup them actually. So ungroup them because they're all in the pos uh, position that I need them in. So I'm going to select the line. I'm going to select the letter G, the letter P, and the letter E. I'm going to grab my Shape Builder tool. So I'm going to go over to my toolbox, grab the Shape Builder tool. And now by default, you'll see when I hover over a section here, you'll see it treats this as a separate object than this object because this line is running through it. Okay. The other thing you'll notice is this little plus sign here, which means you're in add or unite mode. If you hold down option or alt, you're in delete mode. So what I want to do is delete this section here. So I'm going to hold down option. I'm going to delete that. Okay. I'm going to move down. Hold down option again, delete this portion of the letter P and delete this portion of the letter E. I'm going to grab my selection tool again. This time I'm going to grab or select this line, hold down shift, select the letter C, the letter I, and the letter G. And I'm going to grab my shape builder tool again. I'm going to hold down option delete this back portion of the letter C, delete that back portion of the letter I, and delete this back portion of the letter G. Also in here, I might also want to delete this portion of the letter N. So I'm going to select that line again, hold shift and select the letter N, grab my shape builder tool, and just delete that. So I'm just going to zoom out pan over so you can see it and now just grab my selection tool I'm going to select the first line and just delete it select the second line and delete that and then just hide my guides and that's how you can use a shape builder to kind of cut through different letter forms okay so I have another example the last one that I'll use with the same thing so before I move on I'm just going to grab all of these letter forms here and group them once again. I'll bring back my guides. And then what I can do is just grab my type tool, click once here. I'm just going to label this one like I did with the other ones. Get lights and then type in pathfinder slash shape builder. And just adjust my letting here. So I'm just going to move over to my very last artboard. And again, I'm just going to lock this layer, make a new one. I'll just name this one Pathfinder and Shape Builder. Grab my rectangle tool. And this time I'll just make a red background. So I'll just fill that with red, grab my type tool, make this 200 points, make it bold, and I'm going to type out the word graphic, and I'm just going to make the word white here, but what I'm going to actually do is remove the letter A. Okay, so we're going to do something interesting here, right? So I'm just going to kern this a little bit. So to kern, you just place your cursor in between one of the characters, hold down the option key or alt key, tap your left or right arrow, 
And I just want to make these a bit closer. So kerning is basically the space between characters, tracking space between words. Okay, I just kind of want these a, a little bit tight here. All right, so I could I could have just tracked the whole word, but I'm just kind of kerning this just a little bit here, especially between the R and the P. So here, and then I'll just make this a bit larger. I want it to actually go all the way across the artboard. So I'll just extend it, something like that. And then what I'll do is, so take note, this is around 360 pixels. So let me just, or point, sorry. I'm just going to type in 360. Okay, so now when I grab my type tool, I'm going to click once and just tap the letter A, and that's going to be in lowercase, right? So I'm going to make this be in outlines as well. So I'm going to select both words. I'm going to take this letter A, and what I'm going to do is just kind of position it right over top to be something like that. Okay, so I'm just going to zoom in. Okay, so I could either position it just to fall somewhere here or just right along the baseline of the R here. Okay, something like that. And then what I'm going to do is select both. So now I could grab my shape builder tool and now I can sort of delete a portion of the letter A. So right here, I'm going to hold option. I'm going to delete that portion. I'm going to delete this portion where it overlaps in the R and this portion where it overlaps the letter P. Okay. Maybe I'll just leave it at that. Okay. So that sort of gives me this nice effect here, right? Where you can see the G and the R and the A in between, okay? So that it's overlapping and also still kind of use your uh, shape builder to create that effect, okay? So again, I'm just gonna grab my type tool, put this down to 36 and bold Helvetica. I'll just type the word design Bring back my guides. You just add it here. Okay. Or you can even just add it over to this section here. Okay. However you feel best, however you think it works, okay. you can do that. And then grab my type tool again, click once this time, make it light, 18 points and just type out Pathfinder plus Shape Builder with Adobe Illustrator. Okay. Now obviously the black on the red is pretty close in contrast. So we'll probably just change that to white. Okay. And maybe this one, we'll just leave it right above in that grid marker and then save it. And then we can just kind of zoom out here. All of these that we've completed, I'll just hit the tab key, save this file, okay. hide my grid lines, and just make sure we have all of our information here. We've kind of looked at all nine of these effects. So we've looked at colors, gradients, blend modes, scaling and transforming. We've looked at envelope distortion, blend tools, 3D extrude and bevel. We've looked at the perspective tool and a couple examples using the shape builder.